All right. Right on. You are live on the air. Go ahead with your question, sir. Hello, Rabbi. Um, I don't want to add too much to the previous Noah question, but uh, I remember Jesus said that um, for just as Jonah spent three days and three nights in the belly of a fish, so the Son of Man will spend three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And mm. first I want to know, do most Jews actually believe that Jonah's story is true? And if Jesus said that, then doesn't that mean that Christians have to believe that story in order for Christianity to be true? So I think most religious Jews. So you're not asking me about Bernie Sanders, right? <laughs> right? No. Okay. So you're asking, do, do religious Jews believe that the, the book, that the events described in the book of Jonah are historical? And if God could create a fish, he certainly could have a man survive in the belly of a fish. I mean, that would be a small-time miracle compared to creating these marine animals. So I think mo most religious Jews definitely believe this is a historical event that occurred 2,800 years ago. Yeah. But I want you to know that Jews are not thinking that way. In fact, in, in some... I don't know, two weeks from now, every synagogue in the world is going to read the book of Jonah on Yom Kippur. And all we're thinking about is one thing, and that is God could forgive you if he forgave Nineveh, because that's the thrust of the story. Now, it's true, you're right, in Matthew 12, verse 40, um, you have that the, the Jonah, the whale... Uh, is a sign of the resurrection. I don't want to get involved in the problem that Jesus wasn't in the tomb for three nights. We'll just ignore that because I don't want to get pedantic, uh, pedantic or picky. -yune. I don't want to do that. So I think people think believe that that's a historical event, obviously miraculous, but yeah, and I think that. Most Christians believe. I haven't done a survey. I think most religious Christians believe that this is a historical event. It's a little embarrassing, too, meaning that you have a prophet, Jonah, who was really quite reluctant to go to the capital of the Assyrian Empire and call upon them to repent, and he didn't want to. He was deeply concerned about how this would portray the Jews, like just like people today are worried how does the behavior of uh, Jews today reflect on Israel as an example. Jews are very concerned about what others think, but I think so. I think most people view it historically, but that's definitely not the point of the book of Jonah. What is very striking, here's the point, is the book of Jonah, unlike other books, is quoted frequently in the New Testament. I wouldn't use the word frequently, but it's, it's quoted quite a bit, most famously in Matthew chapter 12. It's quoted, in fact, a, a few times right in that same area that the people of Nineveh actually testify against the Jews. Someone, after all, greater than Jonah is with you, and you're not, you're not becoming Christians. What's so striking, what I, I think the takeaway that the book of Jonah comes up frequently in the Christian canon. And it's never for the reason why the book of Jonah is part of the Jewish canon. It's the reason why the book of Jonah was written is to convey that even the worst people on the planet, if they repent, God will forgive you. That's it. That's the whole point of it. And what's very striking is that we are told that the Christian Bible was written so that to deal with the problem of sin, it's something I said frequently, and that is the one thing I admire Christianity for is that it's awareness of sin. I admire that about Christianity, that they're aware that there's a problem of sin. The problem is that their solution to sin is a motherload of bad ideas, human sacrifice, vicarious atonement, Eucharist, all this is just terrible. What really we should be doing when we consider the mistakes that we've made in our lives is look at the people of Nineveh when the reluctant 
prophet finally came to them in chapter 3 and explained that in 40 days the city would be overturned and they repented and God forgave them, chapter 3, verse 10. Nineveh turned back to God and God forgave them and, and Jonah, as the book ends powerfully, is flabbergasted and you know he his and God shows him he has a gourd and water and it disappears and he's as he gazes upon Nineveh and God asks him you're worried about the gourd but these these are the people I created so the whole book is that I can save you even if you're the worst person in the world I can deliver you I can save you and I will save you even if you think you're irredeemable in my eyes, you're my kid. And if your kid makes a mistake, you'll take your kid back. I created these people. Look how the book of Jonah ends. And how the Christian Bible manages to miss that is mind-blowing. Now, um, we know the reason why. is because Christianity is trying to sell you, is trying to sell snowballs to the Eskimos. I mean, it's, we don't need a dead Messiah. It's not biblical. In fact, human sacrifice is the mother load of bad ideas. So as I said, Christianity should be admired for asking the right questions. The question I deal with sin, what's the solution? But the solution to smoking cigarettes is not to do crack. So that can't be the right answer. And that's what Judaism is saying. Judaism is saying, Christianity, we applaud you for recognizing that there's a problem with sin. It's just your your antidote is a nightmare. So, uh, yes, we believe that what occurred, what is described in Jonah, is a historical event. It shouldn't bother people. I mean, much greater miracles than that are recorded in the Tanakh. The key is you, you the church, Matthew 12 in this case, you miss the point. The point is that God will forgive you if only you would return back to him. And you don't need blood. You don't need a lamb. You don't need Golgotha. You don't need Gal Calvary. You don't need God's son to die instead of you. You don't need anyone to pay the price for you. You can repent and God will forgive you. Now, if you believe that, then you will immediately resign from your church. You will leave skid marks, because you'll realize that no one could die for your sins, but you, like the people of Nineveh, and you're probably not as bad as them, can repent and God will forgive you through his mercy. Thank you so much for your question. A Shana Tova to all of you. If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. I don't know אשר מלך בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נעשה בחפצו כל